a little bit. A little bit. Are you playing soccer? A little bit. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing, a little bit? I told you. No playing soccer in the kitchen. Okay? What do you say? I gotta start cooking. You you go watch out for people. Make sure nobody gets in, okay? You hear me? You hear Papa? Okay. Go do your job. Get Gracie. Watch out. They try to sneak in the front door, okay? Okay. Okay, a little bit. How's everything going? Huh? Well, there's your ball down there. Or your Christmas ornament. Okay, but don't play with it right now. we got to be cooking, okay? Come on. Help Papa get some things out. Got the carrots. We got that. Okay. Oh, get us out a little bit of beef. Beef steak. Not much. Okay. Get that out. I think we got some peas somewhere. Just have to have some good old uh, frozen green peas. That'll work too, won't it? Oh, uh, we'll need some garlic. Always garlic. That means you can't have none. And of course, an onion. I believe we, we got it all there, Gracie. Okay. A little bit. You like, well, hello there, friends and family. Didn't see you again. A little bit. You let them sneak in on us. Gracie, I see how you are. But anyway, since you're here, come on in the country kitchen. We're whipping up something a little bit special and something you may remember from back in your childhood too. So hey, grab a chair. If you want to help, come on in the kitchen. And let's get to cooking. Here in the deep south of Alabama. Okay, come on a little bit. You gotta help. A little bit. A little bit. You ready to cook? You ready to cook? Well come on. Let's get her started, okay? What do you say? Okay. As you can see, Lily Bit's ready to go. And like always, I got things out here for you so you can sort of take a gander at them. And it ain't a whole lot this time. It's a real simple recipe. And it's a recipe that goes all the way back once again to my childhood. Yep, it surely does. And it, it can be made a million ways. This is just one way because this is what I have on hand. And that's the way the ladies in my family back when I was growing up would have done it too. They would have used what they had on hand. But what makes it sort of special, and you may remember this, yep, rice a the San Francisco treat. Now who doesn't remember their famous jingle and the cable car coming up over the hill in San Francisco? Yep. It first came out in 1958 with its very first version. And then in the early 60s, it came out with all kinds of other flavors. And I will guarantee you this, almost every American family was familiar with rice on their table, or at least watching that iconic commercial and their jingle, rice a the San Francisco tree. Yep. That's going to be the basis of our skillet supper. Surely is. And to make it a little more interesting, since you saw on the title, how long does it last? That we'll talk about here once I show you how we're going to make it even all the more yummier. Okay? So what are we going to add to it? The old rice aroni here. Well, we're going to make it a full meal. And we've taken out a little tiny, small chuck eye steak. Oh, yeah. And if you don't know what a chuck eye steak is, I did a video on it. It's 
one of those butcher secrets. Woo! These babies are tasty. And they're cheaper than a ribeye. They surely are. But we're going to take this and we're going to chop it up. And that's going to be the meat in our rice -roni dish. Stretch it. Yep, we are. And I will guarantee you that don't weigh but maybe five ounces. Ain't a lot. We're going to throw in a carrot for some color and healthy vitamins. Some frozen green peas. Yep. Give it some more vibrance. And nutrients. Of course, half of a small onion. And about four cloves of garlic. To give it a little more flavor, we're going to use the French's Worcestershire sauce. Yep. I didn't remember to say it right again. And just some salt and some pepper. Pretty much basic seasoning. Of course now this also has a, a package inside it and since this is the creamy four cheese it's going to be four cheeses albeit powdered but like I said there's a special caveat that comes with this here box of fine rice roni the San Francisco treat yep let me show you and let's talk about that a little bit okay we want some rice roni tonight why? Well, I was watching an old 60s TV show, complete with commercials, and there it was. One of my childhood favorites. So I dug through the pantry, and I finally found a box. But, it does got a little age on it. Let's see. Right there. Yep, July the 26th, 14. Yep best before that's 2014 and now it's april the 26th 2022 so yeah it's almost eight years old but is it still good well what do you think and you might be thinking right now well i wouldn't even chance it i just toss that well with prices going where they are with food all the talk about shortages crop failure, no fertilizer, and nuclear war, and what have you, it may come down to a box of eight-year-old rice aroni and your survival. But as long as you know what to do and how to go about it and how to tell, you may be able to determine too, should you have the knowledge, to know whether this box of rice aroni is still good too. Let's take a look at it. Now the first thing I suggest doing with any pasta mix, an older rice mix that isn't, you know, in mylar or number 10 can is, get you a little bowl, pour out that there rice and vermicelli, yep, which is pasta with a fancy name. And vermicelli is basically that little bitty Hard to see, tiny piece of pasta right there. <laughs> and then it's got rice. But I'd put it in a bowl and I'd run it around my fingers. You want to make sure nothing's crawled up in it and uh, start to make a home. You know what I mean? Most of us do know. We all know about weevils and mealybugs and all that stuff. But this appears to be just fine. Let me show it to you. You see? Looks just fine. I can't find nothing crawling in it. Now, your next test is you got to sniff it. Yep. You got to. Nope. I put my nose right down in there and it smells pretty much like nothing. Rice looks like rice. The vermicelli looks like pasta. Yeah, and that's another th point. I'll bring up right now. Be familiar with what you got in your pantry. Not so much as when you find a eight-year-old box of rice roni, but just so you know what it should smell like, look like, and taste like. In other words, store what you eat, not what you may want to eat at the end of the world. But it looks fine to me. 
So we're going to proceed. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is open up this here fine powdered cheese package. Yep. And we're going to do that too. Yep. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to give it a sniff. Yep. Smells like cheese. Nothing's crawling in it. Dip our finger in it. Yep. Tastes like cheese. And it ain't even a mile or back. So it's good to go. So there's our base ingredient. Our eight year old rice room. So I and Lily Bit and maybe Gracie, we got to dice up a carrot, some onion, and some of that there beef steak. Yep, that little tiny chuck eye steak. And get ready to make us up a skillet supper right here in the country kitchen. Well, with the help of Gracie and Lily Bit, we got everything chopped up. So we're ready to get this show on the road. And make whip us up some eight year old rice aroni and jazz it up with some lovely chopped beef steak. And we chop this up into about a little quarter to three eighths inch thick pieces. You know, similar to what you would do in a stir fry. Yeah. Make that little five ounces of beef go a long way. Everybody gets a little, not a lot. So we got our big old skillet heating up. And add a little more flavor. And I forgot to show you when I had the ingredients out on the counter. We're going to drop us in there. About two tablespoons. That there sweet cream butter. Oh yeah, we, we surely are. And we're going to set that pan at a pole. <clears throat> which would be sort of a, a medium. I mean, my gas range goes from zero to 10. So I guess you'd say five would be dead medium. So medium, medium low. But I mean, you know your stove. So you know what you need to do and what you don't. Now you could use some olive oil, canola oil, sunflower oil. You can even use some of that margarine. Yeah, I know. But you know what? We poor folks use it. But nope, that ain't margarine. Nope. That's some of that there great value. Sweet cream butter. Salted, I might add. And there's a reason for that too, but I ain't going to get into it on this video. If you don't want to use salted butter, don't. I do. You know, back in the day, that's all we had. And there was a good reason for that. Well, our butter there. It's starting to shimmer and we'll kick we'll kick it up to five you know that's why it's a medium okay now we're just going to take this nice chopped up chuck eye steak we're going to plop it on in there and we're going to let it get all happy in that butter yep look at that now that steak wasn't even as wide as my hand, maybe about two thirds, and not even as long. And what I'll be making up tonight, as you'll see, Mr. Tom will probably stretch it to four meals just like he did that last skillet supper. Y'all watch that. Don't let it burn, okay? We just want to get a little brown because there's flavor in that brown, right? Y'all know that. Woo, it's looking good in the neighborhood. And that beef, the smell, starting to look good too. Hey, you want to throw me those on y'all on in there too. And we chopped up our onion. That was about half of that there medium yellow onion. And about the same sizes, you know, quarter inch chop right there we're gonna throw that on in there Woo -hoo. don't get wild
There. Nothing goes better. I mean, whew, you could stop right there on your own. That fine beef steak. And that'd be just fine. But everybody knows steak needs a little of that there pure ground. Black pepper, and now's the time to give it just a little. I would say maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. And we're just going to fly the salt just lightly over it. Woo. Didn't even hardly stop for a second. We're going to let those onions and that steak start melding together. And the smell right now is just starting to become amazing. Just some simple onions, some old cheap chuck eye beef steak. Oh yeah, starting to get good. Now we still got our garlic to go. But as you know, that goes in right to the last. And what we'll do with our beef and our aromatics and our uh, carrots, which I'm going to throw in right now too, is once that all gets a little brown, not slap cooked through, We'll scoop it on out of here, okay? And the reason we'll scoop it out is because then we gotta cook the rice roni. And you gotta toast your rice roni first, right? Well, let's put those carrots on in there. Well, you wouldn't have to toast it. I think my mama, she skipped that, just like she skipped browning ground beef. Mama was one of those that threw it in the pan when it got nice and gray. She continued on <laughs> with whatever she was doing. And there we go. We got to get our magic lid again, right? And just so happens, Brugal Mr. Tom's got it right over here standing by from the last time. Yep. We'll just get that baby on there. Woo -hoo -hoo. And we'll let those veggies and that their uh, chopped chuck eye carrots come together, brown up a little bit, and we'll be back. Keep an eye on it, okay? Don't let it burn. Well, we let that go about 10 minutes. And we got us a little bit of brown on the meat. I'm going to show you, of course. Can you see it? See the brown? Yep. So we're ready to go ahead and get this all out of the skillet. Now we're ready to start making our rice aroni. And it's so easy if you've never made it or can't remember. It's right here on the back of the box. Yep. And what you're going to do is you're going to start off with another two tablespoons of that sweet cream butter right there. Mm. That's good stuff. I almost used olive oil. And you could. You surely could. Or any other kind of oil. You know, two tablespoons of it. If you ain't into butter. Now the reason... We got that butter over there getting that pan all filled up with buttery goodness again and of course it's got some of those bits in there from browning up those onions and the meat you know that's all flavor we don't want that going nowhere do we surely we don't we still got that pan it's on medium and she's got nice and toasty I hope you can see that meat. Of course, I mean, here's the way it is, folks. I don't know how your stove will do. That was 10 minutes. Full covered. If you got a lid, it might go a little faster. You know, electric's going to cook a little different than gas. you got to learn your stove, which means 
can't be watching Netflix, YouTube, or uh, MSN, or whatever you watch while you're cooking. Throw on some music. Get a buddy in there. Cook. That's the entertainment. So we got our butter all nice and uh, melted. Next thing it says do is dump our vermicelli and our rice on in there. Yeah, give it a little stir. Now you might wonder what we're doing now. Well, we once we get that butter all stirred up in there, then we're going to flatten it back on out. And we're going to start toasting us some rice and that vermicelli. Yes, we are. Because here again, that toasting is going to add a whole nother depth of flavor to this dish. Now, I know some of you are probably already saying, I never toast mine, Mr. Tom. Well. That's what Rice says to do. Now, I've took them at their word, of course. Sometimes I cheat, too. And just throw it in the pan, hot pan. Throw in two cups, two and a quarter cups of water. And chunk in two tablespoons of butter and call it good. But we're looking for flavor. I broke out the steak, okay? Of course, we've had that steak sitting in our freezer since 2019. Ain't nothing I bought right away in fact you can actually go back to 2019 and watch my shopping videos over at you know superfoods and see where I bought those chuck eyes I talk about them often so we're gonna let that all toast up okay keep an eye on don't let it burn burning won't be good now when you're toasting your vermicelli it don't take long you're going to see it change and darken up as you're seeing this darken right now. Now this is where you got to know what the vermicelli is, vermicelli, and what the rice is. And you can already see the color in the little white rice. So what we're going to do now is we got to put us in our water, okay? Hold on. So it said two and a quarter cups. Ooh, baby. There we go. You can smell that toast. That's one cup. Now for the second cup. We got to go get a quarter, okay? Don't let me forget it. And the final quarter. So, Just like the box says. Toast that vermicelli. And that. Then put in your two and a quarter cups of water. Yeah. Anybody can read the box. You miss the time. And you're going to cover and reduce the heat to a simmer, okay? But what I like to do, I like to, you know, bring it up to a boil. Of course, the box says do that too. So we'll bring it up to the boil first, which it will help if we put on our magic cover right here. And we'll bring it up to a boil. And then we'll turn the heat down to a low simmer for not five, not ten, not fifteen. Yeah. And while it's simmering too, I'll be adding in some of this fine garlic. Yeah, buddy. Or I might add it when I add back. Woo! That browned chopped chuck eye and my carrots and onions I guess it won't matter either way will it and at the very end we will add the magic powdered cheese but if you don't want to use the magic powdered cheese you could use some of your favorite cheese out of your Frigidaire you know, some cheddar, Colby Jack, Parmesan, mozzarella, 
Hey, whatever you want. I'm going to use the cheese pack. Well, as you can see, it's up to a nice rolling boil. And we're just going to go ahead right now. And we're going to add in our meat again. You know, the meat, the onion. Yep. We surely are. Right there. And we're going to put that on in there. So, as that rice and vermicelli pasta is all cooking, it's got all that flavor. And, so I don't burn my garlic, which is so easy to do when you throw it in with the onions and meat. And that's why people hate garlic a lot. It goes bitter on them. Because there's a light brown and there's burnt with garlic. Ain't much in between. <laughs> and as I've gotten older, I've learned it's always a wise idea to put it in towards the last. In case you just ain't paying good attention. Now look at that. Woo! It's already looking good. And remember, we still got the green peas, okay? Don't let me forget. We're going to set our timer for the 15 minutes. I love these modern stoves. You know, back in the day, all we could do was try to keep track of things. Sometimes we didn't do too good. We're going to put on our little magic cover again and leave it for 15 minutes. Like I say, don't let me forget the green peas. Because, I mean, they're frozen. They don't take nothing. You just throw them in towards last. Last five minutes of cooking. We'll come back. So in ten minutes, I'll see you again. For the green pea edition. Of rice a with beef, onion, garlic, and simple seasonings. Just how long did it last? So y'all, it's been going about 10 minutes. We're going to uncover it. Woo, it's starting to look good. Surely is. It's on a low simmer. It's going to give it all a nice stir. Something else we're going to do right at this moment is we're going to add some more flavor. You know, with this here Worcestershire sauce. And I don't measure. I would say probably about a tablespoon or maybe two. It'll be okay. And then we're going to dump in these peas. There's a half cup frozen green peas. No, they don't take no time. And then we're just going to let it continue to simmer. Now I want you to see the beauty in this, okay? I want you to start seeing it. It looks lovely. As long as we don't cook our peas till they become, you know, that dull Uncle Gov green, you know what I'm saying. It'll stay colorful. Let's see how long it's got to go. We'll just try some of that rice and vermicelli right now. Mmm, it's about right there. So, put on the magic lid. We're going to let it go for another five solid minutes. We are. And we'll be back, okay? Well, y'all, as you can hear, the timers went off. And it's been cooking that last five minutes. Oh, yeah. She's starting to look good now. Yep, that rice and vermicelli pasta has soaked up that lovely butter and water. 
It's looking beautiful now. The only thing left to do now is put the cheese mix in. Let me show it to you. Ooh, do you see that right there? That's darn right colorful. And tasty looking too, don't you think? I think so. But let's go ahead and throw the cheese mix in. And then we'll have to give it a taste test. Okay? See what else it might need. To, you know, jazz it up some. So we got our cheese packet. And we're just going to sprinkle it right on in there. Yep. Said it's four cheese. I didn't even read the box enough to... You know, and it's still powdered. And we got to mix it up, you know. Sort of like, you know, when you get hamburger helper. And I know, youngins, this is processed food and all that. But if you'd grown up in the 50s and 60s when if your mama didn't make it and your grandmama didn't make it, it didn't come out of the backyard or the local market or the very small supermarkets we had back then. You didn't have it. I mean, you got to understand, during the era of the 40s and the 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond, is sort of the era of processed foods. You know, that's where you got all that variety. And that's why the supermarkets and the big box stores, Walmart, Tarjay, you know, and all them are so huge. It ain't from just the basic ingredients. It's from all that variety in the center aisles. Boxed, canned, and jarred. But like the box says, it says stir that on in there. Turn off the heat. And you're supposed to let it wait three minutes. Not sure what's magic about three minutes. But that's what we're sort of going kind to of do. But I still want to do a taste test at this moment and see if we need to add any other seasoning, like more pepper, more salt, or maybe break out the thyme. Yeah. Maybe some oregano, basil, turmeric, turmeric, something. We'll just have to see how tasty it is straight out of the box. So, I got my official taste tester. Now I'm going to try to get me a little bit of everything right here. Now I will taste test it again in front of all of y'all. This is for me deciding should it need anything. Mmm. That ain't too darn bad. But I will say, and you know, we old folk got to watch our sodium. But I didn't put that much in there. That's why I'm using the salt shaker instead of getting out the canister. You know, I'm going to add a little more salt. I don't need a lot of salt. And you know, if you follow me, I really don't cook with a whole lot of salt. We'll get that all mixed up. And we'll give her another taste test. Right there. Got carrots, peas, vermicelli, rice, beef. Woohoo! Oh yeah. Well, that did it. That extra few sprinkles of salt, which salt is a flavor enhancer as well as the cheapest preservative on the planet but it's basic function is flavor enhancement now that's tasty just think i'll hit it with a little more black pepper you know i am about my pure ground black pepper mm. and if i wanted to heat it up some you know but it's already getting hot outdoors you know, winter's done, come and gone. Spring is sprung. It's about gone too. 
but there we got it. Well, that's about it. Got the heat off. And, I mean, what could you eat with it? Because it's a whole meal in this pan right now. That's why we called it skillet supper. Well, we could throw us together a nice salad. Or, like we used to do back in the day, have it with some nice cornbread. Or, if you were a northern family, like we were, with just some plain old white bread and butter. Which is probably how Miss Tom's going to go tonight. But let's take a look at it, the final product again. Well, there you have it, the final product. And it is quite vibrant. Yep, you got your brown beef, your uh, orange carrots, and green peas. Yeah, you can see some translucent onion in there. And that lightly orange color of the cheese powder. And it tastes just fine. And before I let you go, we'll have another taste test. And you'll see me put it in my own mouth. Yes, you will. And if you're watching this video, understand. No little old country engineers were harmed during the making of this video or eating this eight-year-old rice a Or did we have any gastrointestinal problems? Okay. So don't worry. Let's plate some up and have the final taste test. And if y'all want some, there's bowls in the cupboard. Just serve yourself. Now I'll get us plenty of white bread and that there pure sweet cream butter too. And we'll go to the dining room table. Well, like I say, the only thing we got left to do is get some and put it in the old mouth. So why not? Okay. We'll get us some all here with everything in it. And uh, y'all come on in close, okay? Well, there y'all are. Yep. It's getting late. You might have seen it's dark outside. But we're going to go ahead and try some of this. Right now. And there we go. Got some peas, carrots, vermicelli, rice, beef. Hey. It's time to eat. Mmm. 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 -hmm. You might be saying yuck. I'm saying yummy. That turned out pretty darn good. Just so happens I have a few more eight-year-old boxes. So I'm going to be tossing them now. <laughs> and you know what, y'all? You just may need to know this sometime in your life. So I hope you never do. But uh, if you do, now you know what you got to do. Smell it with your nose. Look at it with your eyes. Make sure nothing's living in it. Yep. Yep. And it's got to be stored properly, too between about 35 degrees and 70. That is a key. And, you know, like we always say, in a cool, dry, dark place. And I do that. So I don't worry about it. Never been hurt before or after. Still got 100% record for not having any problems. But I know when to say no and when to say yes. Like I say, I hope it never comes to you or your family, your friends, your loved ones. But it's came to my life a few times, and it just may come to yours. So, hey, it's late. I'm going to eat. I'm going to make me up some of that there buttered white bread. Two or three slices, and I'm going to sit down at my desk, and I'm going to enjoy some four cheese. Rice and Rooney, the San Francisco treat. Yep, from 2014 I am. So, y'all, until I, a little bit, which you may have heard in the background, she's still playing Christmas ornament soccer at 9 o'clock at night. 
Gracie's asleep on the love seat. Kid crew's all been fed and they're all curled up in the cop boat. Till we all see you on the next video. Y'all take care out there. Stay safe. And God bless each and every one of you. As you bless others. Till we see you on the next video. Hey, even if you don't got old rice runny, grab some next time you're shopping. And relive the past. It's cheap. Still, grab some while you can. July the 26th, 14. Nearly eight years old. Well, it will be come July this year. But, still looking good. And still yummy. Woo! We're going to be eating on this for at least three or four meals. Thank God. Later on.